Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and I am back again to talk about multi-scale instruments. As you saw in that introduction, I've gone back to that multi-scale sound. I'm playing around with my Ormsby and playing with my Mayonnaise. And what I wanted to do today was to compare and contrast the difference between a guitar that has uh, straight frets and a guitar that has a multi-scale system in place. So what I've done for you there is I've written a, a short track and I've played it twice, once on my Ormsby, which has the multi-scale frets, and once on my Mayonnaise, which has straight frets. And what we're going to do is going to talk to you about these guitars, talk to you about the benefits of that multi-scale system, and then we're going to listen to some isolated uh, versions of those tracks so you can really try and hear a difference between those. And then, of course, I'm going to tell you what I think about the difference between them. So let's start with the Ormsby. So this is my Ormsby Goliath. It is uh, an absolutely ridiculously cool instrument. Uh, this is a custom actual finish for me. Uh, Perry made this with a Red Dead finish, which is fantastic. I absolutely love the finish on it. <laughs> it's a Swamp Ash body, uh, maple fretboard, has custom Ormsby pickups, and of course, seven string, and it is multi-scale. So the, the uh, low string is obviously longer than that high string, a lot shorter. So our frets, run at an angle. And this is for a very simple reason. I've done videos on this before. In fact, my most popular video is talking about uh, multi-scale instruments and what the benefit of fan frets is. And it's nothing to do with intonation. It's absolutely about our tension. It will control your tension. And we'll, we'll definitely see that when we compare it to the, uh, compare it to the minor seven string. So in terms of the scale length difference between these, this is a 25.5 inch scale on the high E string, going down to a 27.8. Uh, scale length on that low B string. So our low string is stretched over a longer space and that allows, a, it allows it to maintain a decent tension when tuned down to a B. If that scale length was shorter, if it was a 25.5 across the board, that low string when tuned to B would be looser on the guitar. And of course that has its own issues. You get that flappiness, the string sounds different, it responds different when you play it. So that's the basic idea behind this guitar. Yeah, beautiful guitar, uh, stainless steel frets, as I say, the custom ones we pick up, and I think they sound absolutely great. Very, very cool instrument, <laughs> to be honest. I absolutely love this instrument because it weighs virtually nothing. It's a chambered swamp ash body, which is nice. Uh, and I love the shape. I love this part down here because I can just sort of rest that on my leg and play like this and everything is completely effortless when a guitar is sat like this. All guitars need this. I think it's the best thing going um, on instruments nowadays. You know, don't underestimate the comfort of seeing your guitar like this. It's uh, absolutely unbelievable. So that is the Ormsby. Now, I appreciate that comparing and contrasting these two guitars might not be considered completely fair because, whew, here is my Mayonnaise. Uh, Duvel Elite. Now, when you look at this and you compare it to the Ormsby, it is a completely different guitar, okay? It's a mahogany body guitar, there's an ebony fretboard on it, uh, it's got a, a lot more expensive pickups in the in, in each position, these are bare knuckles, this is a, a nail bomb, I'm sure, and a cold sweat in the neck. So it is a completely different guitar, you know, and I wouldn't want you to listen to this track and try and compare these sounds uh, based on the gear that's involved. It's much more about how the string responds being stretched over a, a wider, or sorry, a longer scale length. So this is a yeah, ridiculously cool instrument as well, but unlike the Ormsby, it doesn't have those fan frets. Now, because Mayonnaise guitars are built out in Poland, they don't like to work with inches, they actually measure their scale lengths in millimeters, so you end up uh, being a little bit shorter. They're 645 millimeters, the scale length, which works out at 25.4 inches, which is actually even a little bit shorter than a Fender. Now, I've never been crazy on having a short scale length, especially when tuning down to B, but I'm actually pleasantly surprised with, well, it's not necessarily how well this guitar handles it. I guess it's how my playing has adapted to that over the years. Generally speaking, if I had the choice, if I could order another one of these, I would like the idea of having a baritone scale one, a 27 inch uh, low string, because then again, I have that tension on the low string. So again, very cool guitar. It has the stainless steel frets, like I say, the bare knuckle pickups, and the track is just recorded on that bridge pickup, you know, full volume. Um, I'm rocking a Mesa Boogie dual rectifier sound. Uh, yeah, so that's that guitar. There's the Ormsby, very different guitars. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna allow you to listen to those tracks. Now, of course, <laughs> I've tried to be as fair as possible, but as I say, these, these guitars are fundamentally very, very different. So what I've done is uh, any 
I've not mixed it in a way that I want to make the guitar sound as good as humanly possible for two reasons. One, that wouldn't be fair. And two, I'm not very good at mixing. <laughs> what I've done is I've applied the exact same EQ to both guitars. So I haven't treated them any differently and I just cut out some of the low end so it doesn't get in the way of the bass too much. Okay, very simple processing on the guitar because we want this to be relatively fair. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to play you a clip of the Ormsby. Now this is the isolated riffs. Take a listen to this. Now here's the same isolated riff played on the Mayanez. Sounds like this. So in my opinion, with that level of distortion, uh, there's not a massive difference between these guitars. There is a difference, don't get me wrong. You can hear a difference in the tone, but I don't think a whole lot of that comes down to the scale length side of things. I think that's more you know, the pickups and, and the woods of the guitar. Uh, to be honest, I'm actually surprised at the level of difference between these guitars. I thought that there would be a much bigger difference than there actually is in terms of the sound of the instrument. I can definitely, well, at least I think I can tell those two apart when I listen to them. But yeah, like I say, in my opinion, I don't think the difference sound-wise, sonically, is anywhere near as big as you might expect it to be. So that might leave you asking the question, why would you bother with fan frets? Why would you bother with these multi-scale instruments? And there is a very, very simple reason for that. Um, they are comfortable, and I'm not talking about ergonomics. I'm not talking about the er ergonomics of the instrument, because of course, down the low end, you could make the argument that it's more comfortable to have this, this, the uh, frets fanned that way. But as you go up, you'll actually find it more inconvenient that the frets start fanning the opposite way. When I talk about comfort, I'm actually talking about with things like picking the string hard, and I'm talking about that bend that I'm playing in that riff there. Intonating that nicely uh, is a lot easier on a string that isn't as loose as it is on the minors. Now, of course, Again, we could get round this by having a thicker string on the Mayanez. I have the same set of strings on both of these guitars. But in my experience, when you put a thicker string on a short scale guitar, the tone of that string dramatically decreases. I've tried it. I went really over the top. I tried putting, you know, like 70s, uh, really heavy, heavy strings on my low string when I used to tune them down to A. And they get so thick that they actually they just don't sound very good to my ears. So I want a thinner string, and the multi-scale will allow me to do that over that longer scale length uh, and maintain a good level of tension. I can pick that string pretty hard, and it, of course it's going to go a little bit sharp when you pick it hard and then return to pitch, but nowhere near as much as it would on a regular guitar. So what I'm gonna encourage you to do is I'm going to, going to encourage you to try that yourself. Take whatever guitar you're playing, okay? Take your, your six string Fender, take that low E string and tune it down. Tune it right down, tune it down to a C, maybe even tune it down to a B, okay? What you're gonna find when you hit that string, it's gonna go a little bit out of tune and then come back to tune. It's not what you really want. And that's a really kind of um, exaggerated version of what's going on when you do this on a multi-scale versus doing it on a straight fret guitar. So in conclusion, for me at least, I have to say that I don't think, I don't think you're really going to, um, 
you're not going to miss out by not having the fan frets. Don't get me wrong. But from a perspective of comfort, from a perspective of confidence would probably be another way of putting it when you are recording. I definitely see the benefits of the multi-scale and it is something that I personally am a fan of. Uh, if somebody wants to trade my Mayonnaise with me for either a V-fret Mayonnaise or for a baritone scale seven string, I would super, super be up for that because I love this instrument. It actually feels great to play, um, but I, I just love the, the, the longer scale length on that low string. Uh, but as I said, I don't think there's a massive difference in tone. Now, in terms of comfort of playing them, the Ormsby wins that, hands down. I can rest it in a different position. It is a very comfortable instrument to play. It weighs almost nothing. It's under six pounds, that guitar. It weighs almost nothing. When I compare it to the Mayonnaise, that's a heavy lump of mahogany. It's got headstock on it. Like That is a heavy guitar. This thing weighs nothing, and I, I like that. I obviously have to sit in front of my computer for many hours a day doing transcriptions, and if I do need to have a guitar on me for teaching and things like that, uh, if you have a guitar on you for six hours a day, you want it to be as light as possible. So the Ormsby is definitely, definitely the winner there. Um, yeah, and I guess the last thing to consider would be price, okay? There is, again, a significant difference in price between these two instruments. Now, I'm not saying that this is, should be a deciding factor, because again, it's unfair to compare things that are so dramatically different in price. You could currently go on Ormsby's website and you could uh, pre-order one of their upcoming Goliath GTR runs. And I think they run you about uh, 1200 US dollars. Don't quote me on that. I could probably bring that up and check, but somewhere around that price point. And if you want to pick up the mayonnaise, you're looking at easily double that, easily double that. And that, of course, is a significant difference. You have to ask yourself, if I prefer the Ormsby over an instrument so expensive, where is the extra money going in something like that? And again, really unfair comparison. This is a handcrafted instrument. This is a custom built instrument. This is uh, made out in the Far East, then taken over to Australia and then kind of set up and sent out. So they are fundamentally very different instruments. But I guess what I'm getting at is you don't, I don't think you need to be thinking of the multi-scale option as being the expensive one, the one that is out of your price range. It, it's an absolutely affordable option. Shop around, you will find some absolutely awesome deals. And honestly, can recommend the Ormsby stuff. They make great instruments. And I'm not bagging on the Mayonnaise stuff. I love the Mayonnaise stuff. I have another Mayonnaise on order as we speak. So I genuinely love both of these brands of instruments. But yeah, that's all I have to say for you today. So what do you think? Could you hear any difference between those two guitars? I'd be very surprised if you could. Um, in fact, part of me was tempted when I uploaded those to do a blind test where you couldn't see them or even to have you see the Ormsby but hear the Mayonnaise and vice versa. Maybe I did that. <laughs> Who knows? Um, yeah, so I don't know if you'll be able to hear a difference between those two things, but I'm very interested in your uh, thoughts and opinions and experiences on this. So have you played with a multi-scale instrument? Have you played with a regular seven string tuned uh, to be on straight frets? Have you even maybe tried a baritone seven string? And which of those two things do you prefer? As I say, big multi-scale fan, not so much for a six string, but as soon as you start going into seven and eight string territory, pff, I crave it, I need it, I want it, I love it. So yeah, let me know in that comment section. Thank you very much. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my supporters over on Patreon. You guys absolutely rock, especially now. Uh, you will notice that that clip of the guitar at the beginning, the guitars at the beginning, that was all shot on my DSLR, and I'm really wanting to upgrade my video rig at the moment, and you will start to see a significant improvement in my video quality. I'm going to be ordering two new cameras shortly, and yeah, that's because my supporters on Patreon have put me in a position where I can put money aside, keep putting money aside until I can make a significant jump in uh, audio and video quality. So thank you very much, guys. If you would like to check me out on Patreon, there is a link in the description. Alternatively, for a guy that's just played a bunch of metal to you on a seven string, you may or may not be interested in some of my books, which are available on Amazon. So yeah, if you've had enough of the metal for the day and you would like to learn some slide guitar, or you'd like to learn some blues guitar, or you would like to learn some country guitar, please do head to Amazon, check them out. They keep the lights on. So thank you very much, guys. I love you all very dearly. If you would like to check me out on Patreon, you can do so by clicking this link up here. You can subscribe by clicking this button down here, and you will find two more of my videos here and here. Any questions whatsoever, please do let me know in that comment section below. I will be active. I will be getting involved. Thank you so much. Much love, and I will see you for another video soon. Goodbye.